Hi, this is Andrew from Equilibrium Systems. The other day I was working on a first-person shooter prototype and I wanted to add the mechanic to highlight over objects you can interact with and then interact with them. Kind of like that there. And I'm using the ultimate first-person shooter asset you find on the asset store. And I realized that after doing some Googling that this exact case wasn't really... Uh, no one really t told you how to do it online that I could find. Uh, they said a lot of the examples I saw were, oh, go look at the demo scene two, I believe it is, and look at that because there's a platform that sort of moves and rotates at the same time. But I could never get it quite looking like this uh, for reasons I'll explain w uh, later in the video. But uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do this today. So if anyone else had this problem, hopefully this helps you. So to get started on a project like this, the first thing you need is a desk asset. I found this asset just free on the asset store, this free furniture set. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, but you can see here when I open up this desk, it has two doors separately modeled, which is very important. You want to make sure you can individually control each door. Uh, if those were both one mesh, it wouldn't work. This technique would not work. The next thing would be to uh, bring in our first person shooter guy. So under uh, the UFPS uh, folder, I'm using Ultimate First Person Shooter version 1.7 or 1.75. I think there's a new version 2.0, which I do not have, but I'm assuming it'll be the same. So under base, content, prefabs, players, I'm going to use this Hero HD Weapons. And I'm going to put him just in the scene here. Maybe move him back a little bit, rotate him around. And then at this point, we should be basically good to go with uh, it in the scene. You can see here nothing's interactable, which is what we're going to hook up next. So the first step of making this desk interactable. So the first thing to do is add a box collider. I'm going to click on the actual door model, add a box collider to that. You can see it nicely fits the door. I did run into some cases where uh, the ultimate first-person shooter wasn't really recognizing this as the, the best, uh, or it didn't seem like it was the ray was colliding properly. I'll show you that a bit later, but I'm actually going to move this collider out of here. I'm going to copy those values, paste it in here, and then paste. Oh, I could have just done paste component as new. That's what I wanted to do. There we go. And I'm going to remove this one. So now we have our box collider on here. And that's what the player is actually going to interact with. Uh, you may need to move this out a little bit, especially if you have a, a collider on the entire desk as a whole, so you can't walk through it. But for right now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to put this uh, collider onto this door like it is. So now we have our collider that we can interact with. I'm going to then add the switch aspect of it. Comes from the ultimate first person pack, and it's called VP underscore underscore platform switch. So this is the actual interaction script. Uh, you can see here under interact type, there's normal trigger collision trigger. Not totally sure the difference between trigger and collision trigger. I can guess that trigger is something you can walk through. Collision trigger is maybe something you bump into. Uh, but normal is just like a normal button, so we're going to leave it as that. Recipient tags, we should probably fill this in. I think probably you want to make this the player, but I haven't really looked into it, so I'm just going to leave it blank. Interaction distance, I'm going to make it pretty big. I'm going to make it just four units for now, but you can play around with that to make it whatever you like. Interact crosshairs, this is the icon that you use, that shows up when you hover. I had that little hand, I'm going to use that again. Interact text, I'm not going to fill this in. This is like a little text display that will appear when you hover over the, your, your item. And I'm not going to use it for localization reasons. This text is not localized, it's just pure text. And I don't want to have to deal with that in here. So I'll either not use it, which I intend to, or I would come back and rewrite this to either take a localization string or something else, some other type of localization. And 
the moving platform, VP or moving platform, this is the actual object that moves. Uh, so this is so you can separate out your switch. So you could have like a switch on the wall and then a platform that moves on the ground. In this case, the switch and the platform are the same thing. So we'll be adding that in just a second. The audio source is the actual uh, sound that will make when you click, when you select the item. I'm not going to use that right now. We're just going to leave that alone. So our next step is to add a VP moving platform script to here. This is now telling uh, the first person shooter asset that this will be moving. Uh, you can see here it added a rigid body. It needs that to move. We are not going to use gravity. We don't want our door to actually fall or anything. We just want it to swing. So I'm going to turn off gravity. The values here don't really matter. This audio source is automatically added to now. I believe that's for down here. You can plug it in here with either a move or waypoint sound or something like that. I'm not going to use that, but I'm sure that's what it's for. You could probably add multiple audio sources to fill in all of these or just um, figure out some creative way to dynamically change the audio clip. Physics, I'm not going to worry about. Path, this is what we're going to work on next. This contains your waypoints, how you want the, the platform to travel. In our case, we want basically the door to be opened and closed. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create our waypoint game object right now, which is just going to be an empty game object. I'm going to add as a child of desk. So I'm going to call this door one waypoints. Then I'm going to add two children to this. The first one will be closed. Second one will be opened. And to get the values of this, I'm going to copy the initial position of our door. So this will be our closed position, like so. And then for the opened, I'm going to start here. And what I'm going to do to get that is I'm going to go to the door model. And I'm just going to rotate it until it, whoops. So there's something you want to look out for. I'm using center as my handle. I want to make sure that's set to pivot. Luckily, when the person who made this model set the pivot on the hinges, which makes it really easy for us to just swing the door like that and get the proper rotation without having to fuss with actually figuring out the location and all that stuff. So we're just going to copy those values into opened, save that, and at, then reset the rotation here. And we should almost be set and ready to go. So I need to drag in my waypoint game object here. The next thing is the type, adjust the type. Ping pong is something that goes back and forth. Loop and target. Target is right to the right to the next waypoint, which is what we want. Uh, auto start. We do not want on. We're going to turn that off because we're going to be interacting with it to start it. Generate gizmos. Uh, basically, we'll add little icons in the editor that you can see for the, each waypoint you create. So you can see here, this is the closed one, this is the open one. I think it's not really meant for something so small. I don't even know if you need to do that, but I, I do it anyways just to be safe. So that's all with this path. Uh, the movement we can leave, the rotation we're going to leave for now. And the only other thing we need to keep an eye on is the door is currently set to static, which means it will not move if we try to move it. So we need to make that dynamic and then make all the children dynamic. And at this point in time, we should be able to open and close the door. So let's take a look. So you can see here we can hover over it. It's See, this is what I was talking about. Or I, I don't really like it being the exact tight fit. Because you can see down here, you'd think you should be able to interact with the door, but it's not letting me. And you can also interact with it above. So something's wrong with the, the ray check that's going on. Uh, but you can see, no, you can't see here because it's not working. Uh, what did I forget? Oh, I forgot to add our moving platform to the platform switch. 
Okay, now it'll work because now we're at, now it actually knows the switch actually knows what to move. So let's save that, and let's also just adjust this box collider a little bit. I found that what do I have to adjust here? Z, yeah. So I moved it down a bit there, just to make it a little more reasonable. I don't know why it does that, but uh, we all have to look into that another day. Another day. So let's start this up, make sure it works. And you see now it's a little better with the highlighting. I'd have to even move it. And there we go. We're opening and closing. Now it's just snapping. The reason it's snapping is after debugging this is that the, we'll take a look at the code. The rotation for sync to movement, which is what we had here. Let's just get back out of here. So you can see here the rotation is sync to movement. Now, you can see here, if it's moving, then uh, linear interpolate, that's the lerp here, uh, from the original angle to the target angle. So basically our starting position, our closed position to our open position, based on the distance that's left to travel. So since we never really move, this basically just quickly snaps you right to the end. And that obviously doesn't work for us. We don't want to move, but we do want to interpolate our rotation. So for that, I wasn't able, there's a few other options here, ease out, custom ease out, and custom rotate. Uh, we could take a look at those, but none of them did the trick. I thought custom rotate might do it, but as you can see when I turn this on, all this basically does is just constantly rotates the door. It doesn't actually take the waypoints into account. So, and the other ones, ease in and ease out, didn't do anything either. So we have to write a custom solution uh, out of code, which is what we're going to take a look at next. So now we're back in the moving platform update rotation function here. And the best course of action is to add a new rotation or interpolation mode. So I'm going to just jump up to this and add a new one called custom rotate to waypoint. And this is what we're going to use to have our new functionality. So I'm going to add a new case here with our new custom rotate to waypoint. And so what we want to have happen in this is we want to do essentially what this is doing up here in the sync to movement. But instead of having the delta or the time from the basically the linear interpolation from zero to one be based off of the distance less to travel, we want it to be based off of something else. In our case, probably just a time or or something like that. And so to get started on that, we need to know what our current angle is. And our starting position and our ending position. We already have this original angle and our target angle, and it's lerping just using that. So this is this is called Euler angles, and I'd rather just use quaternions, which is a little little nicer way to do this. So I am just going to uh, do that. I'm just going to show you. So instead of instead of doing the Euler angles, which is another like which is like yaw, pitch, and roll. Uh, we're going to use rotation, which is a quaternion. We're going to use the this VP, which is the ultimate first-person shooter math utility. It likes to use this NAN safe quaternion. I'm going to do that. And then we're going to, the quaternion has its own lerp. So then we need a uh, original, instead of angle, I'm going to add a quaternion. And then instead of a current target angle, I'm going to add current target quaternion. And then we're going to have a value in here. I'm going to call it rotation delta. And that's going to be our uh, value from 0 to 1 that we'll interpolate over. So let's uh, pop up to the top here. And see there's a path section, movement section already, rotation section. So I'm going to add my own stuff in here. And protected. 
Uh, let's see here. What did I add? Float m rotation delta. Start that at zero. That's we'll 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 adjust where all those get done, and then also protected quaternion m original quaternion, and we're going to make that equal to the identity, which is basically zeroed, zeroed out. M current target quaternion. Okay, so that is the start of our interpolation. So basically what we want is uh, this, when we're rotating, we want the rotation delta to increase by some value. We'll just set it to 0 0.01 for now. And we also want to make sure that it doesn't go over 1. So I'm going to use the math function, the minimum. And basically, this is taking the minimum of our rotation value and 1.0. So basically, if rotation delta goes over, it'll clamp to 1. Because this value in the, the linear interpol interpolation has to be between 0 and 1. Uh, basically, uh, this was 0. The original is 0. And the target is 1. And anything in between, that's the interpolation part. So after that, we will... Uh, let's see what we need to do next. So the next thing we need to do, if we're looking at this, you see if we're moving, um, don't if we're not moving, sorry, don't do any of this code. This code, if we look at where this is call, called, it's in a fixed update, it's called all the time. So essentially back here in the update rotation, we don't want to be calling this all the time. So we want to add a bool just like, just like the not moving, we're going to call it, or just like moving and moving, for member variable moving, we're gonna we're gonna create an M rotating. So let's just pop up to the top again, add that in. Set it to false. So now that we have that going, we need to actually set those values property properly. So in the on enable, which occurs when we when the this object first starts up you'll see that in here we set the current angle if there's more than one one um, waypoint. So we're going to basically just do the exact same thing but with our quaternion. So our first waypoint, waypoints, M next waypoint, and instead of Euler angles, we're going to just add grab the rotation. So this will set our initial rotation so to get going. Then in there's a function called get next waypoint get next waypoint ne go to next waypoint sorry and down here this is where so every time you choose to go to the next waypoint it updates the original so the starting with the old and the next the current with the new with the new waypoint value and gets the the new angle. We're going to do basically all this, but for rotation, uh, you can see it also sets moving to true. So we're basically just going to duplicate this. So our original quaternion is going to be our current target quaternion. Our, then our current target quaternion is going to become the next waypoint uh, rotation. And the M rotating is going to be set to true. So at this point, we're basically ready to start rotating whenever we, um, whenever we want to use this script. And I think we should be able to test at this point and see if this works. So just let it compile there. Once it's done compiling, we can change this to custom rotate to waypoint and save it off and play and there we go so at this point it's working pretty much what we want Whoop. Uh, you can see here there's a little little jankiness it only worked the first time that's no problem we'll fix that up 
But there's also a problem in that if we look at the code, we never actually turn M rotating off. So this is now happening all the time and it just is continuously getting capped. And so that's why we saw it snapping at the end. So as soon as it was uh, picking a new target, it basically snapped right to the end. So we need to shut it off and reset uh, the values. So to do that, how that works for the moving is if we go to, I believe it is update path. Yes, so you see here update path is called first in the fix update, then update movement, update rotation, update velocity. So an update path, you can see it tests the distance, and then if it's, uh, if it's reached its next waypoint, it calls on stop, which sets moving to false. So we're going to do something similar for the rotation. So if get uh, rotation left is less than 0.01f, then uh, m rotating equals false, and we'll also reset the rotation delta to 1.0f. Then we're going to go to distance left, basically make a copy of this function here. Get rotation left, so if there's uh, less than one, less than less than two waypoints, there's no time left. So instead of position, and here we're going to use rotation and uh, the Euler angles. Sorry, not and Euler angles. Be oh shoot, sorry. There we go. Because this doesn't take this takes vector threes, and this will all be the exact same as the quaternions. It's not. It won't be quite as accurate, probably, but it, it doesn't need to be super accurate as long as it's roughly the same. Let's see. Let's just check it out, see if it's a little better at this point. There we go. So now it's nice and smooth. We reset it every time. There's one more little trick um, I want to fix, and that's if you interrupt it halfway, you'll see it kind of snaps to the next point or the end point. Let's fix that up next. So in to go next waypoint, instead of just setting our original quaternion to the cart, uh, current target quaternion, uh, if we're in our special rotation mode, uh, let's see here, current rotation, and we're rotating at the moment. Basically, we want to set the original quaternion to our current rotation so that we're not jumping right to the end of where we were. Let's also reset our delta back to zero so that we have a nice smooth interpolation going on. And that should be all we need for that. Let's test it out. There we go. It'll be a little slower on the return, especially if you just start it, because now it's interpolating over a really small area. But it's nice and smooth now, no matter where you click it in the in the process, in the 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 entire swing of the door. So there's one other thing I'd like to improve, and that is right now we have no control over the speed of the door. So let's take a look at that. So we can see if we go, actually, if we go back to the editor, go to rotation, you can see if we go to custom ease out, there's this ease speed. I really want that to be here. So in order to do that, we need to open up the moving platform editor script, which is what displays that. And let's just basically copy this ease speed here, except we'll change instead of custom ease, we'll use our custom rotate to waypoint. Let's not call it ease speed, let's call it rotation speed. We're gonna reuse this value. We could add a new value, but I'm just gonna reuse that. And instead of 0 0.001, or let's add a couple of zeros so that we have a lot more control over our current speed. This will now, if we go back to the editor, let it compile, 
and open that back up, you'll see now we have a rotation speed. So it's set to 0 0.1. If we make this 0 0.01 and, well, actually jumping ahead a bit, we have to go back to moving platform and we'll look to find out where we use this here. So instead of just having this flat rate value here, we'll now use rotation ease amount. And this will get the door to swing at whatever value we put it at. So it should be slower than it was before, or the exact same. Let's see, did that not save? Let's just double check. No, it did save. Uh, let's see. Let's add another zero in there. There we go. Now it's super slow. And if you want to make it faster, we can, let's say, two. There we go. Now it's much faster. So in this case, if you want it to be instantaneous, you would just set this to one and it would instantly open. Uh, 0.01. I think 0.01 is what I found as the good value. 0.1 should be relatively quick. Well, we just saw 0 0.2, so it should be, yeah, it's quick. So if you need a more responsive door, uh, that's good. So that was good enough for me. There are some downfalls. That's basically it. There are some downfalls to this method. Uh, the chief one being that if you ever have to update this uh, asset pack you downloaded, usually what they want you to do is delete the entire folder and then re-import it. And that's always a good idea to do, cause especially if they've removed some files. You definitely want to do that. Uh, the downside, obviously, is that you're going to lose all this work. So make sure you're using source control and keeping track of what you've changed in your in your source control in somewhere. Um, you see, I put these tags here, kind of like saying I added this, but you don't necessarily need to do it that way. Just using source control, you should be able to see with your history what, that, what files you've changed and if you've changed anything to these sort of packs. The other downfall actually is with the code I just added, this ease amount. You'll see that this is not frame rate dependent right now, or sorry, frame rate independent. So if you're running at, you know, five frames a second, your door is going to open extremely, extremely slow. But if you're running at a thousand frames a second, it's going to open pretty quickly. And one thing to get around that is you could, you could probably do something like uh, time dot delta, whoops, 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 time dot delta time. Uh, and then time something like your target frame rate. And that would give you something close enough to a zero to one range that you'd probably get away with it. Uh, you don't want to just go multiplying this by delta time or even by time because that ne doesn't necessarily guarantee you're kind of in a zero to one range. At least if you're, um, I guess you you would divide you would di divide by your t target frame rate. Um, if you did something like that, if you knew what your target frame rate, so if you were aiming at 60, that would probably be good enough. If this, this would be roughly 60 divided by 60 and it would, it would be a zero to one range. You're normalizing across that, but otherwise you don't really want to be just throwing random numbers in here. Cause you want it to be in that zero to one range to make it smooth right now. This works fine for me. I'm not really doing anything crazy but just something to keep in mind for the future. If you do use this and want it to be, you know, the exact same across all frame rates, across all platforms. And, you know, if you're running on switch at 30 frames, but then you're running PS4, Xbox one at 60, uh, your doors will open at a different speed because you'll have more. Although actually, wait a second. I don't know if that's true. Now that I look at it only because this is in the fixed update, I'd have to check that, but I think fixed up may, might run at a constant 30 on all platforms. Anyway, something to look into, something to keep in mind. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully it helps you.